Recording in progress. Okay. Good evening. This is uh, uh, the South Suburban uh, Computer Club uh, meeting of the Chicago Computer Society for October 2024. Welcome all. We got one heavy agenda uh, for this evening. Uh, we're not, I'm never going to have a chance of getting through uh, all of it. And uh, my handout is twice as long, which is, I think, the first time I've had one this long. But there's been a lot of news around Windows and security issues. That's uh, uh, why it's going to take uh, quite a bit of time. But there's uh, uh, quite a few uh, tips uh, uh, within the handout as well that uh, some of you can uh, take advantage of. So you'll have to bear with me on uh, uh, some of this stuff and i've got one other thing i gotta do and i'll be right with you Okay. Tonight, uh, uh, oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> well, we'll see how that works out. Got to check a setting. Otherwise, yeah, that would have caused a problem. Uh, at any rate, the uh, material I got tonight, I'm going to start off with uh, uh, some cybersecurity information and uh, then get into Windows 11 stuff. And uh, it, depending on how far we get, uh, uh, we might have uh, uh, other general purpose in my handout. The bottom of the uh, list contains some Windows 10 specific uh, uh, information, four articles. So I'm going to get that up and get that out of my way. And I'm going to come up here. All right. Now, let's see if I can lose my mind. Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Why it's important and how you can stay safe online. Here's a quick overview of this presentation. Importance of Cybersecurity Awareness. Cybersecurity Awareness is crucial in today's digital age to protect against cyber threats and cyber attacks that can cause loss of personal and sensitive information, financial loss, and damage to reputation, protecting against cyber insecurities. There are various ways to protect against cyber insecurities, such as using strong passwords, enabling two-factor authentication, keeping software and applications up to date, and limiting personal information online. Tools for Safer Internet there are various tools and services available that can help make the internet a safer place, such as antivirus software, firewalls, VPNs, and encryption. Agencies for more information. There are various agencies and organizations available that provide valuable information and resources 
related to cybersecurity, such as the Department of Homeland Security, Federal Trade Commission, and National Cybersecurity Alliance. The Importance of Cybersecurity Awareness Rising Cybercrime Cybercrime is increasing at an alarming rate, with new forms of threats emerging every day. It's essential to stay informed about the latest trends and take necessary precautions to protect ourselves and our data. Cybersecurity Best Practices Following cybersecurity best practices can help you stay safe online, including using strong and unique passwords, enabling two-factor authentication, avoiding phishing scams, and keeping your software up to date. Here are some cybercrime statistics. Global impact of cybercrime. Cybercrime is a global problem with billions of dollars lost every year to cybercriminals. The impact of cybercrime is felt across all industries and sectors, with individuals, businesses, and governments all at risk. Types of cyber attacks. There are many types of cyber attacks, including phishing attacks, malware attacks, and denial of service attacks. These attacks can be launched through various methods, such as emails, social media, or infected software. Who is most at risk? Everyone is at risk of cybercrime, but some groups are more vulnerable than others, individuals who use insecure passwords, share personal information online, or fail to update their software are particularly vulnerable. Small businesses and organizations are also a high risk, as they often have limited resources to invest in cybersecurity. Cybersecurity Best Practices Password Management Using strong, unique passwords and enabling two-factor authentication can greatly reduce the risk of cyber attacks. Data protection. Backing up data regularly and encrypting sensitive information can help prevent data loss and unauthorized access. Safe online behavior. Avoiding suspicious links and downloads, keeping software up to date, and being cautious about sharing personal information can help protect against online threats. Here are some of the most prevalent cyber insecurities. Phishing attacks. Phishing attacks are the most common form of cyber attack and involve sending fraudulent emails that appear to be from a reputable source in order to trick the recipient into revealing sensitive information. Ransomware. Ransomware is a type of malware that blocks access to a computer system or sensitive data until a ransom is paid. It's one of the most dangerous types of cyber attacks, as it can cause significant financial and reputational damage. Social engineering. Social engineering is a tactic used by cyber criminals to trick people into divulging sensitive information or performing actions that compromise the security of a system. It can take many forms, including pretexting, baiting, and quid pro quo. Phishing attacks. Phishing attacks are one of the most common forms of cyber attacks that use social engineering to trick users into giving up sensitive information, such as login credentials or credit card details. They typically come in the form of emails or messages that appear to be from a legitimate source, such as a bank or a social media platform. Ransomware attacks. What is ransomware? Ransomware is a type of malicious software used by cyber criminals to lock users out of their own files and demand payment for their release. How ransomware works. Ransomware works by encrypting files on a user's computer and making them inaccessible without a decryption key that cyber criminals demand payment for. It spreads through email attachments, malicious links, or vulnerabilities in software. Protecting against ransomware. Protecting against ransomware involves maintaining up-to-date antivirus and antimalware software 
avoiding suspicious email attachments and links, regularly backing up important files, and ensuring all software is patched and up to date. Protecting against cyber insecurities. Creating strong passwords. Creating strong and unique passwords is one of the most important steps you can take to protect yourself from cyber insecurities. A strong password would be at least 12 characters long and include a mix of upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols. Using two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication adds an extra layer of security to your online accounts. By requiring something you know, such as a password, and something you have, such as a smartphone or security token, to log on. Safely browsing the Internet Safely browsing the Internet involves avoiding suspicious websites, not opening suspicious emails or attachments, and keeping your software up to date. Strong Passwords The Importance of Strong Passwords Strong passwords are critical to keep your online accounts and sensitive information secure from cyber threats. Best Practices for Creating Strong Passwords Creating complex passwords with a combination of upper and lower case letters, numbers, and special characters, as well as avoiding common words or phrases, can help you create strong passwords that are difficult to hack. Common mistakes to avoid. Reusing passwords. Using personal information or easily guessed words. Writing down passwords and sharing them with others are common mistakes that can compromise your password security. Two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication is a security process that requires users to provide two different authentication factors to verify their identity. This provides an extra layer of security beyond just a password. Here are some tools needed to make the internet safer. Antivirus software. Antivirus software is a program that prevents, detects, and removes malicious software, including viruses, worms, Trojan horses, and spyware from your computer. It helps to keep your computer safe from cyber threats and ensures that your online activities are secure. Firewalls. A firewall is a network security system that monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules. It helps to prevent unauthorized access to your computer or network and keeps your private information safe. Other security tools. There are various other security tools that you can use to make the internet a safer place, including password managers, two factor authentication, and virtual private networks. These tools help to secure your online activity and protect your privacy. Antivirus software. Antivirus software benefits. Antivirus software protects your computer from malware, viruses, and other cyber threats. It scans your computer regularly for potential threats and prevents them from infecting your system. It also provides real-time protection against new and emerging threats. Choosing the right antivirus software. When choosing antivirus software, it is important to consider features such as real-time protection, automatic updates, and compatibility with your operating system. You should also consider the level of technical support offered by the vendor and whether the software is easy to use. I personally have used Avast for the past 20 years and can highly recommend it. Firewalls. Firewalls are network security systems that monitor and control incoming and outgoing network traffic. They can be hardware or software based and use rules to allow or block traffic based on predefined criteria. Things to watch out for when using the internet. Phishing scams. Phishing scams are a common form of cyber attack where attackers use fraudulent emails or websites to trick people into giving away sensitive information. 
suspicious emails. Suspicious emails often contain dangerous attachments or links that can infect your computer with malware or viruses. Social engineering. Social engineering attacks involve tricking people into divulging confidential information or performing actions that can cause harm. These attacks can be carried out through social media, email, or other means. Federal Trade Commission FTC's mission, the Federal Trade Commission, is a government agency that is dedicated to protecting consumers from fraud and other deceptive practices in the marketplace. FTC's role for online safety. The FTC provides resources and information to help consumers stay safe online, including tips for protecting personal information and avoiding scams. Department of Homeland Security, DHS role in cybersecurity. The Department of Homeland Security plays a vital role in securing the nation's critical infrastructure and cyber networks from cyber threats and attacks. DHS resources for staying safe online. The DHS provides a range of resources and tools to help individuals and organizations stay safe online including the National Cybersecurity and Communications Integration Center and the Stop, Think, Connect campaign. Conclusion. Following best practices for cybersecurity is essential to protect ourselves from cyber threats. This includes using strong passwords, avoiding suspicious emails and links, and keeping software and antivirus programs up to date. Okay, so what I'm not going to do in this video is tell you to use stronger passwords, set up 2FA, use a VPN. Wow, trying to get that to stop. There we go, finally. Jeez. All right. This is the uh, only other one that I have on, uh, uh, that's a video on cybersecurity. October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. It's an annual reminder to stay safe in the digital jungle. Greetings, Cyber Explorers. Welcome to October, the spookiest month of the year, and not just because of Halloween. It's Cybersecurity Awareness Month, a time to remind ourselves that the Internet, while amazing, can sometimes be like wandering through a digital jungle. There are dangers lurking around every virtual corner. But fear not, with a bit of knowledge and the right tools, we can swing through this jungle like pros. Let's dive into the cyber underbrush and uncover how to stay safe and sound online. The dangers to watch out for. Before we arm ourselves with cyber machetes and and a malware shields, Let's identify the creatures of the cyber underworld. Phishing attacks. These crafty crooks send emails or messages that look legit, but are designed to steal your information. They might masquerade as your bank, a favorite store, or even your grandma, though grandma's spelling is usually better. Phishing can come in the form of emails, text messages, or even phone calls, and often involve urgent or threatening language to trick you into providing personal information. Malware, malicious software that includes viruses, worms, and trojans. It's like inviting a termite colony into your wooden cabin. Yikes! Malware can damage your files, steal your data, 
or even allow attackers to take control of your device. Common signs of malware include slow performance, frequent crashes, and unexpected pop-ups. Ransomware Imagine a cyber pirate hijacking your ship and demanding treasure for its return. Pay up or walk the digital plank. Ransomware encrypts your files, making them inaccessible until you pay a ransom to the attackers. Even then, there's no guarantee they'll restore your data. Spyware. This sneaky software spies on your activities, gathering intel without your consent. Think of it as a nosy neighbor peeking through your blinds. Spyware can track your keystrokes, capture your passwords, and monitor your online behavior, often leading to identity theft or financial fraud. Adware It bombards you with ads, slowing down your device. Picture a pop-up book where the pop-ups just never stop. While adware is generally less harmful than other types of malware, it can be incredibly annoying and may also track your browsing habits. EDOS Attacks Distributed Denial of Service Attacks Overwhelm Servers Making Websites Unavailable It's like a virtual flash mob that crashes the party. These attacks flood a website with traffic, rendering it unusable for legitimate users and often causing significant financial and reputational damage. Tools to protect yourself. Now that we know what's out there, let's gear up with the best cyber protection tools. Antivirus software. Norton, Avast, AVG, and Bitdefender are the cyber equivalent of a sturdy shield and sword. They can detect and eliminate various threats. Make your choice, but remember, only choose one. More is not better in this case. Antivirus software scans your computer for known malware, removes it, and protects you from future infections. Make sure to keep it updated regularly. If auto-update is available, leave that turned on. Firewalls. Think of these as your digital moat, keeping unwanted intruders out. Windows, Mac OS, and most operating systems have built-in firewalls. Make sure they're enabled. Firewalls monitor incoming and outgoing network traffic blocking suspicious activity and unauthorized access. VPNs, virtual private networks, tools like NordVPN, Avast SecureLine VPN, and ExpressVPN create a secure tunnel for your data, perfect for those who value privacy, like secret agents or anyone using public Wi-Fi. VPNs encrypt your internet connection making it difficult for hackers to intercept your data and providing anonymity online. Password managers, tools like Bitwarden, Dashlane, and 1Password help you create and store complex passwords because password 123 just doesn't cut it anymore. Password managers generate strong, unique passwords for each of your accounts and store them securely, so you only need to remember one master password. Passkeys. Passkeys, a new form of passwordless authentication. They work by creating a unique pair of cryptographic keys, a public key that's stored on the website or app, and a private key that stays on your device. When you want to log in, your device confirms your identity, often using biometric like Face ID or Touch ID, and the two keys 
work together to grant you access without needing to type in a password. Two-factor authentication adds an extra layer of security by requiring a second form of verification. It's like a second lock on your door. Burglars be gone. 2FA typically involves something you know, a password, and something you have, a phone or security token, making it much harder for attackers to access your accounts. Best Practices to Follow Now, let's talk strategy. Here are some best practices to keep you out of the cyber trap. Keep software updated. Always update your software and operating systems. Those updates often patch security vulnerabilities. It's like getting a new and improved lock on your door. Enable automatic updates whenever possible to ensure you're protected against the latest threats. Use strong passwords. Avoid the obvious. Combine letters, numbers, and symbols. If your password is password or 123456, we need to have a serious talk. A strong password should be at least 12 characters long and avoid common words or phrases. Consider using a passphrase, a series of random words strung together. Be wary of links and attachments. Don't click on anything suspicious. If an offer sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Remember, no Nigerian prince is going to send you millions. Verify the sender's email address and look for telltale signs of phishing, such as poor grammar or unusual requests. Back up your data. Regularly back up your important data. If ransomware strikes, you'll be able to restore your system without paying the cyber pirates. Use both local backups, like an external hard drive, and cloud backups for redundancy. Schedule backups to occur automatically so you don't forget. Educate yourself and others. Knowledge is power. Stay informed about the latest threats and share this knowledge. If you can teach grandma to use email, you can teach her about phishing too. Follow cybersecurity blogs, attend webinars, and participate in training sessions to stay up to date. All devices, all operating systems. The digital jungle doesn't discriminate. It's out to get all of us, whether we're using Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, or even a smart toaster. Here's how to stay safe across all platforms. Windows. Use Windows Defender. Keep Windows Update active and be cautious with downloads. Windows Defender is a robust built-in antivirus solution that provides real-time protection. Regularly scan your system and enable advanced threat protection features. Mac OS. Enable the firewall. Use Gatekeeper to block apps from unknown developers and consider additional antivirus software. Mac OS is known for its security, but it's not immune to threats. Gatekeeper helps prevent malware by allowing only trusted apps to be installed. iOS, Android, only download apps from official stores, App Store or Google Play, check app permissions, and update regularly. Mobile devices are prime targets for attackers. Review app permissions to ensure 
they're not accessing more data than necessary. Use mobile security apps for added protection. Smart devices, IoT, change default passwords, update firmware, and consider setting up a separate network for smart devices. Many IoT devices come with weak default passwords that are easy to hack. Regularly check for firmware updates to patch vulnerabilities. Isolating smart devices on a separate network can prevent a compromised device from affecting your main network. In conclusion, Cybersecurity Awareness Month is the perfect time to take stock of your digital safety. Think of it as fall cleaning for your cyber life, but with fewer dust bunnies and more malware scans. Stay alert, use the right tools, and follow best practices to ensure your journey through the digital jungle is a safe one. Remember, the internet is a wonderful place when you know how to navigate it. Happy Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and may your digital travels be secure and scam-free. Please note that I use GPT-40 and Pictory AI to put this masterpiece together. This video is available on my YouTube channel. Just follow the link listed. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks. Thanks for watching and listening. I'm always happy to answer any questions you may have related to cybersecurity. Okay. Now, let's see if I can get control of this again. Come on. There we go. What? Slow response. Okay. Uh, one thing that I do want to mention. Uh, uh, here is that when uh, uh, you get ransomware, there is a, a lot of the older stuff you may accidentally uh, uh, get infected with. And a lot of the security companies, uh, uh, just as an example, uh, Norton, Avast, and uh, others, they uh, have a lot of the keys that will unlock the older versions. But the bad guys are constantly making improved versions with new keys. So uh, uh, you never know. You might have a, a, an old one. They've got a, a key. They give you the key. You unlock it and you get uh, back uh, to your normal life. So that's a factor. Cybersecurity Month is in October. Why? Well... How about the upcoming holidays and all the online type of uh, uh, purchasing and shopping that's going to be done? And to some extent, too, Ned, uh, 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 people, especially uh, in the month of December, may be uh, 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 selling uh, uh, investments uh, uh, related to their uh, tax situation. And you also have uh, uh, this year an election. And a lot of foreign governments are trying to spread disinformation that's making uh, uh, the election worse than it otherwise would be, both in being bombarded with uh, uh, disinformation, and you can't tell it from the good information all the time. That's a big problem. So you got to keep in the front of your mind cybersecurity every day throughout the year no matter what also in passwords uh, they were saying you know uh, don't use commonly used uh, uh, words and uh, that also includes names including pet names uh, children's grandchildren great-grand kill uh, children's uh, names birth dates anniversary dates 
these are uh, things that uh, uh, too much of that stuff is out there from other data breaches and or putting too much of the wrong kind of information out on your social media networks and they'll use it against you if you don't care i hope you got deep pockets uh, uh i'm certain uh that the uh lawyers to try and get your uh butt out of uh, any legal issues uh, is going to be substantial next up depreciated features for windows clients uh, occasionally I, uh, uh, go through this, but I, uh, don't do it, uh, very often. I, uh, find out afterwards, but basically, uh, the, uh, depreciated features are in this table here. Now, uh, uh, what's called legacy DRM and DRM is on music and movies, uh, uh digital rights management uh is going to be uh, depreciated and uh dropped you got uh, 3d paint which most people probably could care less about because only a small percentage even have 3d printers uh adobe uh, uh type one fonts this is uh, uh for those who uh, uh have printers primarily laser printers that have postscript and uh, if they're real old, this uh, uh, may cause you some uh, problems. So uh, if uh, you have one of those printers, uh, make sure you get the latest copy downloaded and saved to your system somewhere uh, in case it's no longer available. Direct access uh, used to be a feature uh, release of uh, Windows. Uh, we recommended migrating uh, from direct access and always on a VPN. This is uh, uh, basically uh, uh, doing uh, uh, linking two of your computers together and trying to uh, uh, transfer stuff from an old machine to the new machine that you bought. Uh, NTLM, um, that gets into uh, uh, your... Uh, networking and then you have a whole bunch of others here i'm not going to go through all of them because there's too many of them and they give you a description of each of them so that you'll know that hey if i'm on 10 and these or earlier 11s and these things are being depreciated and i got to go to 11 some of these things aren't going to work anymore because they're either uh, uh, going to be disabled and or completely removed sometime in the near future. They don't always tell you when they're going to do this. It's not like you're going to get uh, an email uh, tomorrow morning uh, uh, when you get up out of bed, this uh, feature is no longer going to be available, even though it's very important to you, the individual. The next one is uh, feature depreciations and removals. One of the uh, ones in here, uh, they have bunches of them here, again. But uh, uh, there's changes in uh, coming up in the taskbar, tablet mode, uh, the wallet is being removed. It seems like uh, uh, Microsoft's wasn't used enough, so uh, uh, that defaults to uh, uh, companies like Google if you use their wallet uh, and other ones as well. So, and uh, the last one I use, it's a, a WordPad. And that's how I make my uh, list uh, for my handouts so you have uh, clickable URL links and uh, uh, instead of just text where you have to uh, highlight, copy, and paste into your browser. So 
that's eventually going to go away, but I've already got at least uh, one, maybe two uh, substitutes for that. Next up, before you install 1124H2, beware of the known issues. And this is a long list of issues. Uh, probably eight of these or uh, so right after this one are uh, all on Windows problems. Uh, those who were able to update their 1123H2 to 1124H2 successfully, you're okay, except for uh, uh, some gotchas that will get cleaned up within the next 30 days. Uh, one of those uh, uh, is definitely uh, on uh, uh, the radar, I guess is the best way to phrase it. Uh, and that's, uh, uh, instead of the cleanup at the end of the configuration, removing all the uh, work area files and other odds and ends, it left them all there. You can't get to them, you can't delete them. They have to figure out a patch that will uh, uh, come uh, in a future update and it will uh, uh, take care of that problem, getting rid of almost nine gigabytes of junk that's going to be taking up space on your system. So hopefully you got lots of free space. Uh, another uh, one is that right now they stopped the uh, release of 2411H2. This is not unusual. For the last five to seven years, this has been a, a frequent thing to occur. They'll uh, fix a whole bunch of things they know about, as many as they can, and in two uh, to four weeks, you'll probably uh, uh, be able to uh, upgrade uh, to the uh, uh, 11 uh, uh, 24H2 uh, version, but it's not an absolute uh, guarantee. It's a monster of a change, and uh, uh, so it's. I guarantee you, if you haven't done a system backup, you better have a backup before you ever upgrade to 24H2 or you're gonna be seeing the blues and you better know how to restore that backup. And it should be a verified backup, meaning that uh, uh, the backup when it's made is verified to be correct and usable uh, when you need it. Unverified backups are worthless because you never know if uh, uh, they're really uh, uh, good and available to you or not until you need them. And then surprise, oh, it didn't, uh, the backup really didn't work, so you're SOL. There is a manual way of doing uh, 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 checks, but I'm sorry to say uh, it's a little too geeky for a majority of people to mess with. I used to do it some before uh, there was uh, much in the way of verification, but uh, uh, there's uh, uh, update uh, uh, new features like Copilot uh, uh, Plus AI tools that'll be showing up. This includes an infamous feature called a recall, but instead of it being automatically turned on for everybody, it will be turned off and you have to manually turn it on. Also, I have read in several places, there is a good probability they will allow you to uninstall that feature altogether. And they may also even allow you to uninstall Copilot if you don't want. So cross your fingers. Uh, driver uh, compatibility problems it, uh, may cause you not to get the update offering. So maybe you've got an old piece of hardware that's got an old driver in it that's uh, uh, causing uh, 
checks and balances that uh, the update upgrade is trying to do to your system not to work and it aborts it i know uh, uh huey poplock of the uh, uh sarasota technology user group uh has a uh, system that has windows 11 22 h2 and he cannot get it upgraded to h uh, uh, 23 h2 so it's a real thing uh 24h2 uh like uh, uh easy anti-cheat issues uh should be quickly uh, resolved uh part of this is if you're doing a, a, a clean install uh they always want you to set up the very first account which is always the administrator's account with uh, attachment to a Microsoft account. That's bad practice. It needs to be uh, local, but they're making it much harder in the last uh, year to be able to bypass that, set up a local account, and then you create a standard user account that you will use for your daily activity. But most people, are only running with one account and it's the administrator. And that makes them very vulnerable to a lot of bad things happening to them. So I'll let you read through this. These are uh, safe exam uh, 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 browser application uh, might fall, uh, fail to open, excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, safe exam browser 3.7 uh, and earlier uh, media creation tool uh, but it's recommended you do, uh, don't uh, no update uh, uh, on when it will be resolved uh, some devices using uh, easy uh, anti-cheat uh, stop uh, responding and receive a blue screen of death and so on and so on and so forth there is also uh, uh, a, uh, it, and I have not seen where it's actually been proven out yet, but some of the tweaking software that makes changes to the Windows environment, especially the desktop look and feel, such as looking like a Windows 7 system, or a Windows 10 system, even though you're on Windows 11. Uh, in some cases, they may block those from ever being installed or running, but that has yet to be proven out. So I'll let you read further on that. Okay, here's another uh, uh, video. What you guys got another video here for you. Windows 11 24H2 has some major problems and we're going to be going through those in this video. So I've just basically upgraded from Windows 11 Pro 23H2 to 24H2 using the Windows Update Assistant. And I wanted to go through and show you some of the pitfalls of updating early to Windows 11 24H2. So once you've got the update done here and you go through and do an update on the system there's been a few issues that have come about and been uh, published online and you can read about those i'll leave some links for you to read up on some stuff if you want to but once you've done your initial update uh, whether it'll be updating via windows update or via the windows update assistant you will then get this method where you have to update windows again and you'll get a bunch of updates inside here once you update these and then you restart the system that is when the problems will start to arise for some of them but you may even have problems while upgrading to windows 11 24 h2 and we'll talk about that after today's video sponsor cd key sales if you're looking for a cheap windows 10 pro or cheap windows 11 pro oem key then check out the links in the video description create an account on their website and use my promo code capital b capital r 09 and apply this to your order and get a 30 percent discount on all of your purchases on cd key sales 
Once you submit your order, they will send you a key. You can use that key to upgrade to the pro version of Windows or activate version of Windows like this. Very simple. Check the links in the video description. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go through and show you some of the things. So if you manage to update to 24H2, then you may see something like this when you go into the storage area inside system. So once you do a scan on the system for leftover remnant files that you might want to remove from the computer, it does a scan and it will find the Windows uh, update cleanup. And there's an area there for 8.9 gigabytes. And this is to do with your uh, Windows update cache folder. During the installation of the update, it puts files inside of that area. And unfortunately, no matter what you try, you will not be able to remove those files Microsoft have said they are going to release a patch to fix it and allow you to remove them. But it's 8.9 gigabytes, as you can see here, show advanced options. And we're not talking about the previous Windows installation. We're talking about this one right here, the Windows Update Cleanup. And it's 8.9 gigabytes in size. And no matter what you do, you won't be able to remove it. I'll show you and I'll run a quick cleanup on this area right here and you'll find that it just ignores it. It tries to delete it, but the files are still there and the space is still taken up. So let's go ahead and what we'll do is we'll quickly run a cleanup on this. I'm not gonna to touch this Windows uh, previous installation here, just in case I wanna roll back here, but let's go ahead and push continue here. And this will go off and it will start purging the Windows update cleanup area, as you can see on the screen there, just above the cancel button. It's trying to remove those files. And once it's completed its uh, cleanup, you'll see that the files are still there. 8.63 gigabytes. So it's removed a few files, but not all of them. And you will not be able to remove that 8.63 gigabytes. It will be always on the system until Microsoft released a patch for it. And that's going to depend on whether it's going to be an easy fix. And it will probably come out in one of the Patch Tuesday updates or whether you know they don't see it as being that important and just leave it on the back burner like they've done with other problems another one is to do with the sfc scan now this bug causes the windows file checker to report a corrupt file that has been fixed by the system file checker tool but then it reports more corrupt files when you run it again so it doesn't actually fix the issue at all it just gets rather confusing and some people may see this on their system thinking they have corrupt files and it's not working and it's broken and they may end up reinstalling windows thinking they've got a corrupt windows operating system when in fact it's a bug and microsoft know about this bug and they will probably end up releasing another patch for this to fix this bug it's a little bit like the uh you know the defragging bug that was around for quite a while and that was quite a bad one because it was actually defragging people's uh nvme drives or ssd drives instead of using the trim command it was actually defragging so this is another one of those where you're going to have to wait for microsoft to actually release a patch for it so let me just show you the error here so you can see it and then i'll speed up the scan again so you can see you can see windows resources protection found corrupt files and successfully repaired them so i'll quickly run another scan and i'll speed it up so we can get to the end of it and you'll see it does the exact same thing it tells you you've got corrupt files and it successfully repaired them but obviously it hasn't and it's just a bug so obviously you are not going to be able to use the SFC scan now at all because you're not going to know whether you fix bugs or what because it's going to keep telling you you've got corrupt files. That's another bug that needs to be fixed. And again, for the average Joe who runs a scan on his system may end up reinstalling Windows thinking he's got major problems. Another one is to do with the easy anti-cheat. If you're a gamer like myself and you play games like Fortnite, Rust, or if you play Apex Legends, they all use the uh, the easy anti-cheat. And if you have this on the system, you'll get blue screen of death and you'll also get crashing. And you might not even be able to upgrade to Windows 24H2 if you have this installed on your system. I couldn't upgrade to Windows 24H2 because I had this installed and I was playing uh, Fortnite and you'll get a blue screen of death now sometimes it will allow you to update but some games uh, like i said fortnite apex legends 
and may stop responding and you may end up with a blue screen and crashing and stuff like that. Another one is Asheville. Now, Asheville 8 is another program or game that people are playing. And if you're playing this, it will result in either a blue screen or crashing or freezing. And you will get issues with this if you're using this particular game. I don't know whether there's other games, but Microsoft know about the Asheville 8 issue. Another one is Intel Smart uh, Technology. This is another one that can cause issues, uh, driver instability, uh, you know, driver errors, things like that. You can get that from the Intel drivers and you can find whether you've got uh, Intel drivers on your system by looking on Device Manager. Microsoft have said they're working on a patch to try and fix all of these issues. Again, uh, you shouldn't even have these issues really, in my honest opinion, before it's released. Not if you've done the amount of testing that they've been doing. So I'm not sure what's going on, but you can tell if you look in here, you'll see Intel for certain drivers uh, inside here. And if it will be, uh, whether it be network drivers or whether it be sound drivers, or if you've got an Intel system set up chipset, you'll see some of the Intel stuff. I don't have it on here because it's a virtual machine, but basically you would have them listed inside here and you would know that that is causing the problem. Now, there's also some other issues like your mouse cursor disappears. So your mouse pointer disappears when you're clicking in text fields or in certain apps such as Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Slack and other programs like Spotify as well. So if you look on Microsoft's website here, they only have a few known issues, but there is other issues that isn't on this list. For some reason, they haven't added them, but these are the ones what we were just talking about here. And a few others that I haven't actually talked about, but like your fingerprint sensor and also uh, wallpaper customization apps and things like that. And safe exam browser applications are also causing issues as well. So these are ongoing uh, problems. These have been confirmed by Microsoft. Again, there may be other ones as well. So I don't know why people are so obsessed about upgrading or updating to the very latest feature updates like 24H2 instead of just holding back for a few weeks and finding out what's actually going on. You'll see it posted online on YouTube. There'll be people making videos about it. There'll be websites posting articles about it. And you'll be glad that you held off from that update. Also, don't be a guinea pig for Microsoft. Let them fix their issues themselves before they release them. Anyway, but that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Have a lovely weekend and I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Okay. No one issues. Uh, this is another article, and it uh, has a different slant on it, and it's giving you background and what's being done. So, but you never know how things are going to work out. Uh, there are some uh, things that uh, Microsoft has known about for a lot of years and uh, what happens, they ignore it because they don't think it's serious enough or they haven't figured out what's causing it. And it could be seven, ten years later before you finally get a fix. This has happened in the past. So... That's an article to read through. Windows 11 uh, uh, Big 24 update leaves behind the nine gigabytes of undeleted files. I'll let you read that one if you're uh, interested in uh, uh, reading it versus what was uh, in the video. Uh, October update doesn't install, gets stuck, restarts. Might have an answer for that one uh, shortly. I'll let you read through that one. 24 update is now also killing internet connections. So you may have problems with your networking. Why uh, 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 all this is getting out, considering how long they've been testing it with the alpha and beta testing, beats me. Uh, Windows 11, 24H2 may crash if your, uh, uh, your PC if you have certain SSDs.
this was a shocker and I uh, just got this uh, uh, I found this this morning this one blew my mind uh, uh, when I uh, came across it primarily uh, let me put this in reader mode so far it looks like uh, uh, these crashes are fairly limited in scope as they seem to happen if you have one of uh, the few Western Digital SSD models, and I think they're all M.2 uh, NVMe. Other SSD vendors appear unaffected so far as, uh, uh, and as reported uh, from the uh, WD uh, community forums, users are getting blue screen and death with the air critical uh, process has died ever since uh, they updated to 24H2. Uh, and then they go on about checking the uh, event viewer, um, which is part of Microsoft uh, Windows, and um, use, usually by professionals uh, uh, more than uh, the average person would. But uh, uh, it gives you a little bit more detail. So apparently uh, Western Digital but the one thing I want you to take away from this is in this paragraph here. Either uh, uh, Strom NBME, uh, Store NBME, which uh, refers to uh, NBME SSD storage drives, or the driver detected a controller error on the device of a RAID port. One, as reported out of uh, uh, Windows uh, uh, last, uh, this is likely refers to the redundant array independent disks controller. Now, I want to impart here from my uh, 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 experience. There's a lot of people who are not in a business that requires 24-7 online uh, accessibility, such as a bank, as an example. Uh, and that's just one example. Uh, there, they will use RAID. It's not a backup. And a lot of people think, especially RAID 1, which is mirroring, is a backup. It's not. A uh, RAID array is an integrity backup to keep 24 7 running systems available instead of crashing uh, when a, a disaster occurs every uh, uh, nas and server that uses raid you must independently back that up to other drives not usually attached to that device and uh, uh, get a, a backup just as if it was a regular desktop or laptop pc and i'm not joking about that quit thinking of raid as being a backup it is not and never has been. It's a, a, a operational integrity uh, scheme to keep things moving along on uh, uh, systems that must be responsive 24-7. And that's really all RAID is used for. And I had a uh, relative with a small business. Somebody in his local community set up his systems and they uh, set up uh, uh, the main computer in the office as a raid one which is mirroring he was starting to have some problems when i was visiting one day he had me check into it one drive was totally gone and the other drive the reason he was having problems had all kinds of corruption and I spent days attempting to recover as much information 
off the one drive as I possibly could get. They either had a warning that uh, uh, they were having problems with uh, uh, the RAID drive, didn't understand it and ignored it, or they never got any kind of uh, uh, message to say there's a problem and there was no independent backup of the mirrored drives. So it really put a dent in the business. Now I got them off of RAID, regular drives, and I got them into uh, uh, doing uh, full image backups with verification so that they can uh, uh, recover uh, from a disaster on any machine, depending on the frequency of the uh, backup. So please, this is one area you've got to uh, uh, keep in the front of your mind. Uh, another one, how to enable uh, the use of Windows Sandbox. Uh, this is a feature in 11 uh, uh, Windows Defender. I don't know if it was in 10. I didn't look. I didn't think to look. But I, uh, it is, well, it says here that uh, uh, it is in 10. But you have to have virtualization and hypervisor enabled on the system for this sandboxing to work. This is an extra level of protection, mostly for your browsers, but many browsers also come with their own sandboxing. But there are browsers out there that don't have that capability, and this will provide at least some uh, additional protection to try and reduce viruses and other malware from getting into your system. In addition, uh, especially if you have uh, uh, access uh, uh, to extensions in your browser, you have the ability to go to the uh, uh, store, it's called, like Google Store, a web store, uh, and go out and get Malware Bytes uh, Secure Browser Guard. That catches a lot of stuff before it can ever cause you nightmares. Next up, Windows 11 Basics. How to uh, uh, use a system restore and go back in time. 11, unlike prior versions of Windows, does not activate Windows Restore Points. And you have to go in and turn it on, and there's at least three different options you can uh, 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 choose from on how to set it up, and uh, a couple of them will also uh, allow you to set up how much space you're reserving uh, on your system for uh, these uh, backups. What they are, especially when you're doing a Windows update, it takes a snapshot before it does any of the uh, uh, updating. And if anything goes wrong in that update, you should be able to, uh, uh, if you can boot into your computer, uh, be able to uh, restore that last backup from Windows Update removing everything they changed and it's getting you back to where you were before the update took place. That's your safety. Some other programs that do various updating, including for some driver uh, uh, updaters, will also set restore points so that if something goes uh, uh, wrong because the driver is not appropriate for your particular setup, it will uh, uh, undo any and all the changes that it does. That's how it works. And I have a follow-up article on that. Uh, how to do a system restore on Windows 11 step-by-step -step guide for those who are not that familiar with restore points. And this walks you through 
a lot of this stuff. Next, nine tips that turbocharge your Windows PC startup time. Windows uh, boots quickly, but only directly after uh, a new installation. Read which tools measure the boot time, why Windows is getting slower and slower, and above all, what you can do about it. And this gives you uh, uh, about nine tips here of things to check out. And the first one is always your startup uh, programs. When you boot the computer up or uh, restart, the first thing uh, uh, after bringing the operating system into the memory is it opens up the uh, startup folder and starts running those applications that are in the startup folder. Uh, most of them are probably not doing nothing else but checking to see if there's an update for a particular piece of software you have installed on your system. I'll let you read through that. Another one, five ways to lock your uh, uh, Windows 10 and 11 uh, uh, PC sessions. The first one here, and I'm going to see if it looks better in read mode. Uh, the first method here, especially if uh, you're, uh, you have children, small children, or nosy uh, uh, busybodies in your home, this could also be babysitting uh, uh, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. If you're working on your computer and you have to get up, the quickest, simplest thing you can do to reduce uh, uh, the kids causing problems is hold down the Windows key on your keyboard and hit the L key. And it uh, will bring uh, up the lock screen where you got to put in your PIN number or password, whichever uh, uh, is required on your system, to unlock it. If uh, uh, you don't let the, uh, the kids know what the, uh, your uh, PIN numbers, passwords are, odds are you're going to be very safe so that you can resume whatever you were doing on your computer without it having a, a lost information, corrupted information, maybe even crashing your system. Kids uh, uh, have one factor that changes when you go into adulthood. They explore. What does this do? What does that do? If I do this, what happens? If I do that, what happens, etc. And that's how you can learn about new things on the computer, especially with new software. You got to have that uh, child's mind set to be able to explore what various features and preferences or settings are on that new piece of software that includes the operating system. And there's four other ways of uh, uh, doing basically the same thing. Microsoft uh, uh, details compatibility issues, blocking upgrades. And that one I cannot put in reader mode. Uh, easy any cheat uh, uh, program, fingerprint sensors, where uh, uh, you, you, you swipe your fingerprint to unlock the computer, it may not work. Uh, wallpaper uh, customization applications, uh, which I have uh, on uh, 23H2, uh, but they're all from Microsoft, so I hope they won't cause a problem, but there are a lot of non-Microsoft uh, variations of it. But one thing that's coming up in Windows uh, uh, 11 24H2 is they're now going to default background and lock screen to Windows Spotlight, changing your background images daily. Uh, Intel Smart Sound Technology drivers. Also, uh, uh, 
asphalt and airborne store game is buggy on 1124 h2 another one is microsoft reveals new ai features coming in preview on uh, copilot pcs in november so uh some of the uh features that uh, will be in 24h2 will be available but not unless you have uh well some of the features will not be available unless you have a new copilot plus pc the ones that are out there right now are all uh arm base laptops and they do support the ones that uh, from uh, all the other manufacturers of uh, laptop, uh, tablet, and uh, uh, desktop computers of any kind should get uh, released somewhere uh, around the end of this year to early next year. That, uh, uh, so you'll have two versions of computers. Those that are labeled explicitly Copilot Plus PC and those that don't have that label on them that are like the ones you're probably using right now. Uh, next is Microsoft is turning its Copilot into a chat box. Oh, happy days. Um, this is going to be also available on Android and iOS phones, I might add. And you can ha strike up a whole conversation and ask, have people ask you, who are you talking to? There's been articles on it. I've already seen it. So you're uh, uh, going to have uh, uh, the ability to literally have a two-way conversation with Copilot by turning on the mic and you'll converse back and forth uh, asking it questions, it answering the best it can, or asking you for possibly additional information. So how this is going to work out, only God knows because mankind has no idea where this is all going to end up. Microsoft details the second wave of Copilot Plus five new features that are coming. Meaning if you've got one of the new machines uh, uh, that uh, say Copilot Plus PC on uh, uh, the box and maybe on uh, uh, the device itself, you'll have additional uh, uh, new features coming soon. I'm not going to get into it because uh, uh, I don't know how many people even have Copilot Plus PCs. They cost, on average, uh, $300 to 1,000% uh, uh, a uh, increase over regular uh, PCs. So you may be talking 1000 to $1,500 on the low end. And some of the more expensive machines that used to cost two or three grand, if they are uh, Copilot Plus uh, capable, may end up costing even more. Good luck. Hope you got deep pockets. What happens when uh, Windows goes into a deep sleep mode? This describes what's going on when it goes into a sleep mode. Is your uh, uh, work saved? Yes or no. Does Windows update in sleep mode? Yes or no. How is sleep mode different from hibernate? And I'll let you read it uh, uh, to uh, understand the different kinds of sleep from shallow to very deep. Uh, snipping tool in Windows 11 is getting another update. Uh, this will tell you some of the uh, new features that it's going to uh, have. It's not a big article, so uh, it won't take you any time at all to uh, 
find out what's there. Microsoft Paint AI upgrades finally bring the classic app out of the 1990s. So apparently on uh, uh, 11, it may also be on 10. I didn't uh, check that. Uh, that the, you're going to get more features uh, available in Paint that are AI driven to help create drawings and sketchings. You can, uh, uh, as an example, start sketching something yourself. Good luck with a mouse or uh, uh, so forth. But if you have a stylus and a touchpad on a laptop or a separate uh, uh, touchpad uh, in place of a mouse, you uh, could uh, do uh, sketching much easier. And it will then take your sketch and make it even better kind of uh, uh, like uh, finishing off a picture. Uh, Microsoft Paint AI, oh, I actually had doubles. Oh, well. Uh, how to use uh, uh, new split screen options in 11. They added some additional new features, and this is how, how to learn how to use them in your day-to-day -day life uh, depending on what you're doing, you uh, a lot of people just ignore them or they don't even know they exist or what they are all about. Other people use some of them uh, and now there's more uh, requested features that Microsoft is putting in. Uh, it's probably more geared to those who are working versus those of us who are retired. Uh, cookies, what are they? Why do the uh, websites have them? And there's lots of various reasons. So it describes them. How do they work? What information do cookies collect? And that varies uh, depending on who created the cookies. Why do websites have the cookies? Why do they call it a cookie? Are cookies bad? And some of them can be. Uh, more recently, what we have uh, evolving are super cookies, which are uh, not covered in here, uh, I don't think. Uh, uh, super cookies disguise themselves and change their look and feel to avoid being removed. And they may have other tricks to try and stop you from removing the cookies by uh, uh, hiding them in not so obvious places, I guess is the best way to put it. So uh, uh, basically, uh, it can be a nightmare if you uh, uh, aren't careful because cookies allow targeting advertising and they usually do not stick to just the one site you're on. They follow you on anywhere you go on each and every browser that uh, you have. So a few browsers have some very good privacy uh, uh, standards that reduce that dramatically, but it's not 100%, especially because of super cookies. Uh, so I guarantee you, the companies you attach uh, to their servers online know more about you than you uh, can remember off the top of your head if somebody asked you all the information you can think of about you and what you do on a computer and some of your habits. And that's the other thing, that massive database that they all use is also figuring out through algorithms your browsing behavior and the places you tend to go to or types of sites you tend to go to. As a good example, if you're into pornography, 
they're going to know and they're going to uh, uh, target you accordingly but bad guys if they get a hold of that information will try and uh, do sextortion and they do that also through other means with our kids by uh, trying to uh, goat them into sending them nude pictures and then they turn around and say they're going to uh, uh, put this up on the web for anybody and everybody to see unless they pay some kind of ransom and it doesn't stop with one payment it goes on and on and on so if you want a nightmare i suggest if you got kids grandkids great grandkids you talk to them and give them at least a heads up last one i've got here i'm surprised i got through all these but i'm uh, trying to be uh, uh get through as many as i can micro uh, uh soft edge uh settings i changed to enhance my browsing experience you got to be a little careful with it uh when um, there are times it's going to ask you in edge to uh, uh, accept their recommended setup i never do i know what i want how i want it and that's it and also there are uh times uh, when you'll get uh, uh let's finish your setup of your edge browser or your uh, uh, windows operating system and that's where they try and get you to also log into your microsoft account to verify the password uh, uh, is uh, correct don't fall for it there uh, uh, when that screen comes up you can uh, uh, if uh, nothing else uh, do a control alt delete or an alt f4 to kill it at that point and not log in and it also will not usually come up with that uh, uh, request again because you went through the beginning portion so those are some of the cuties that i've come across mostly in the last five days I kid you not. And uh, so I'm going to uh, try and bring up my document handout. Forgot I got to get that back. If I don't get it back, I don't get to put it out. Okay. Okay, I posted the, uh, the handout. And you're going to find twice as much in there as I just covered in the browser. I'm not kidding. Especially take note of the first three. You're going to give me a indigestion. I lost. All right. Anybody got any uh, questions, issues they want to discuss further? We got a few minutes left. Nothing else, huh? Yeah. So everybody's a, a, a genius on uh, all this stuff. Yeah. Hello, were you going to say something? Yes. Okay. I just bought a mini PC. I would pre install Windows 11 and just got out of the box. And after hearing and reading some of this, uh, beware, beware, my question is, do I wait when to update Windows 11 24H2, or do I, you know, can I do it now? 
you can uh, attempt to do it now, but you're not going to get anywhere because they took it off the market. Oh, okay. they, got, um, they realized they got too many serious problems. So you okay. cannot update right now. All right, good to know. So the pre-installed that's in there should be fine. Not right now. It, 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 will, it, it will not work right now. So don't even click on it. Okay. So I leave it in the box for about a month or so. I mean, Just for a few more leave weeks. it alone. It's going to take two or three weeks before they re-release Windows 11 24H2. Okay. <coughs> Period. You're not going to die from this whole thing. And uh, for those who, uh, like yourself, you've got a machine with 23H2. You have to run Windows Update to get the last of the 23H2 updates first. Restart the computer. Install them. Log back in and run Windows Update again just to get the option. Now, your option may be uh, uh, showing there, but it shouldn't work because uh, uh, they took uh, uh, it off the servers that link attaches to. Because okay. they don't want to have more people screaming at them for having their system crash and burn. Yeah, also... New PCs or laptops that you get will still be on 23H2. Right. Okay. Don't worry and about And they it. will stay that way until all this gets sorted out. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it could be in two weeks from now, uh, more or less the end of the month, or it could be next November 2nd, Tuesday, that they might release... Windows 11 again, unless they think there's some uh, uh, other serious ones, and that could delay it. I think one of them went all the way to December in the past. Yeah, I. Now, one thing else about a new PC, you will still want to get the current updates for yeah. the for Windows 11, and that will just be the 23H2 versions. Right. Yeah. And it tells you what version uh, every update is for. And as long as it doesn't say 24H2, you're okay. If it says 24H2, I would wait and not uh, uh, allow it to update. And it's highly un it's highely unlikely it'll try to force I it'll try to give you any 24H2 updates well, because your system your system will read out as still 23H2. Well, in some cases in the past, they uh, may give you the notice box that you have to click on to initiate that upgrade. Right. But in some past versions, along with your uh, last updates to the current version you have you get the upgrade also and therefore you have no control yeah if it's available yeah, if it's available. if it's available but right now don't even think about 24h2 <laughs> there is nothing yep. in the way of updates you're not going to get on the 23h2 that are critical right. All of it is new ways of seeing and viewing things, uh, new features, especially AI. Unless you're really deep into AI, you're not going to get that much anyhow unless you have a Copilot Plus PC, period. If that uh, uh, machine you just bought didn't have the label anywhere on the box or on the machine, Copilot Plus PC, there's a lot of features coming in 24H2 you cannot do anything with. And okay. there may be even some uh, uh, features you may have a limited capability of using. Okay. 
Understood. Thank you. Good advice. Uh, that's what we're here about. Uh, any user group is uh, here to try and help out uh, uh, the users that show up net understand uh, some of the issues and problems and uh, uh, keep them informed and give advice uh, uh, whenever possible of things to do or not to do in browsers. Uh, hang on one second here. So bad about it. As an example, I come up here to my uh, Firefox browser and come down here. It says uh, add-ons and themes. Now this is Firefox in uh, uh, Chrome-based browsers, including Edge. Uh, it's extensions, and you can install from the Chrome Web Store even on Edge and on browsers that don't want you to put in extensions you can open up a tab put in chrome space web space store hit enter and be able to open up chrome web store and add those uh, extensions so i'm going to come over here here is my extensions i have installed this one here microsoft byte Browser Guard. I find it essential and I have it on all my browsers and I usually have multiple browsers on all my machines and I got more machines than probably everybody who was in this meeting tonight whether they're uh, gone or still here and they uh, I probably have more than all of you together in machines because I have a lot of old uh, uh, stuff that's pre-11. I have a lot of 11 supported machines, etc. because I'm an experimenter. I'm a, a person who tries to uh, learn more things about the hardware. Uh, uh, I'll use some of these machines to experiment on before I put something on my production machines. But mm -hmm. that's the key. You have to designate machines as production or other, like say an old machine that you've got. I recommend everybody have at least two machines. Why? Because if something happens to your main one, it's not working right, etc. You may be able to use your old machine if you keep it up to date and uh, do whatever it is you want to do until you get your main machine up and running again correctly. If you need remote assistance, which I give uh, people, then I usually have you uh, uh, open up like a Zoom chat or something like that on one machine, the machine that doesn't have the problem. Then I uh, uh, can talk to you without tying up any phones and it doesn't cost a thing. Then, on the machine that has a, a, a problem, I will either have you install something or I will use a tool that's built right into Windows, etc. And I will try and either guide you totally or uh, guide you in part through the process of uh, trying to get your system uh, healthy again. Is that is that a free uh, free or is that something you have to subscribe to? For what? Malware bikes guard. I haven't free. paid time for it. It's free, absolutely. Hmm. Now another thing that uh, I want to point out too, uh, uh, I, uh, I just remembered it. In the past, Windows firewall was anemic. It only blocked incoming stuff. Any programs on your system, including the operating system, could send anything they wanted to out without anything stopping it. Uh, nowadays, Windows Firewall does block some stuff from going out of your system because some malware 
will come in, try and get your contact list, and send emails to everybody on your contact list and uh, uh, end up uh, uh, getting them infected to get their contact list, and it keeps snowballing. Uh, this happened uh, uh, with Al Cheeks uh, way back uh, between 1999 and 2001 when he got such an infection. And happily, I caught uh, uh, the problem, but uh, uh, some people weren't as lucky. Uh, so that's an issue. Now, there is a way of taking the built-in Microsoft uh, firewall and I have articles in the handout uh, that allow you to make your own rules I use a separate piece of software from Malwarebytes called uh, 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 well, not the name just now Hang on a uh, I don't have it on uh, this here it's uh, uh, in the uh, system uh, God, let me see if I can find the, uh, uh, Malware Bytes Windows Firewall Control. This is also free, but it has ways of showing you what might be blocking your outbound messages or inbound messages because a lot of websites update very frequently and they make some change and cause a website not to come up in your browser until you go in look at the uh, firewall control and see what an uh, uh, entry in there may be blocking it uh, for that site and you then uh, say allow that and there may be more than one and suddenly you'll uh, be able to refresh that website in your browser and it will work now you can close up uh, uh, the windows uh, uh, firewall control at that point but it's a continuous nightmare especially with uh, this uh, web to something protocol uh, hang on a now this one I have set up it's doing a lot of blocking but it, uh, this is the firewall control this adds security entries by itself when you install it for inbound and outbound uh, uh, communications when you set the profile to medium or high this is when the headaches begin because this is when you can have a website uh, uh, that you just did uh, last night was working fine and uh, uh, next morning it's not working you can't get into it it's probably because of the firewall control setting. Uh, you can uh, temporarily change it to a low filtering and probably refresh that uh, uh, site and have access to it. The best thing to do, however, is instead come down, uh, come down here to the bottom and uh, you'll see what look like two pages. I use the one here in the middle. And this is going to do a check. And this one here, refresh setting. I uh, It doesn't have a check mark. I always put it in. These are some of the things that are being blocked right now. But I'm able to operate because I'm not using widgets. But if I did, I'd have to... Uh, uh, you look at the number you only usually have to uh, uh, do a number one time by right clicking and saying allow however uh, there is TCP IP and UDP protocols 
And some of these here, you have to uh, basically go slide this bottom one over and uh, determine, yeah, it's the last column here. And most of them will be TCP uh, uh, protocol. And so you uh, do one, say allow, and it's unblocked. On the other hand, if it says UDP and TCP from the same site, you have two that you have to do. Uh, this uh, Microsoft Edge Web Two uh, Web View Two changes a lot, and from time to time, it's a problem. So if something, uh, after going through and looking at uh, your applications here of online sites, you don't see the problem, 10 to 1 says it's a web view 2 problem and you have to uh, uh, find all of them that are in there to say uh, uh, allow. The uh, uh, anti-malware core service uh, I'm not sure which one that is. I uh, forget right off the top of my head. I'd have to go look that up again. Uh, but these are, uh, it only gives you a limited view of the most recent thing. Then you would, uh, uh, when you get done here, you go back into your browser again. You would hit the refresh button. And if it works, great, you're done. You can close out those two screens. If it's not done uh, uh, and it's still blocked, you want to uh, uh, take and manually uh, uh, refresh the uh, screen so that it uh, uh, will go through and uh, give you a new one by clicking up here. Uh, Oops, I got the wrong one. Yeah, fingers. I've already forgotten how I'm doing. But at any rate, basically, if you uh, want to close that window, click this window, and with that uh, uh, renewal thing there, anything new that were instructions uh, to go in and out to the uh, uh, internet it will uh, give you that information near the top here. And it gives you the date and time stamp. So you can stop looking uh, depending on when you uh, did a refresh on the browser. Note two, there's a new safety device if you haven't used this. <laughs> if I want to make any changes over here, like allowing, or I see an entry here, and I uh, uh, that is uh, uh, going out, which are uh, looking at the allowed stuff. I uh, uh, can say deny that going out, but that's uh, uh, another area that you have to look at. But to make changes, you have to click this button here, and when you click that, it'll ask for your administrator password. And then it looks the same, except this button's gone. And now in this screen here, I can make changes. I can also look at uh, all my rules by uh, uh, clicking this top one over here. And I can look through any and all of my uh, rules that are out there. And I can, uh, uh, if I want to, isolate it down to uh, uh, just the input uh, uh, rules or just the output rules, et cetera, et cetera. It's an extensive little uh, uh, application, but firewalls are your first defense. And I want to uh, mention there, your first area of defense in firewall is in your router. Whatever router you've got has a firewall. But 
those firewalls, unless you made modifications in your router, all of the people who are bad guys know all the information about all the routers and what passwords to use that are default unless you change possibly the user name not all of them allow you to change it from administrator to something else and but at least put a password in that's different and strong now uh, in addition to that I always have on my machines, including Linux, the firewall running. There are a lot of Linux people who don't have it running because they uh, uh, don't understand it. They don't understand uh, uh, how it uh, uh, helps prevent bad things from happening on their systems. And trying to educate them in some cases uh, is an impossibility, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, think of a, a stubborn uh, kid or a stubborn uh, uh, animal you've got that won't obey you. So that's uh, another area. Is there anything else that uh, anybody's uh, interested in? Problem or question? My, on my part, very informative and helpful, so thank you very much. Well, you got to read through those articles uh, in that handout if you downloaded it. And it's uh, uh, all you do is open up your chat, and you'll get the, uh, the option there. You click on that uh, download, and uh, uh, it'll download it to your system. Uh, because there's twice as much material in that handout as I just went through. Yeah, yes, for sure. Anybody else got anything? Thanks for another very informative yeah. meeting, Tim. Oh, yeah, a lot of, it's, a lot of stuff it's to go over. all last minute. I'm not kidding uh, when I say that. Once in a while, I do get other pieces of material I hang on to and then bring them up in a meeting or more FYI. And these uh, uh, that are in the handout, that'll all go into another uh, more FYI. I may not put them all at once in the next one. I may put half of them in and half of them the next time. Okay, well, lots to think about and to follow up. Okay, yep. then uh, <laughs> I'll uh, uh, stop the recording.